Welcome to Joy in the Morning. Today you're stuck with me. The better half of this exchange, my beautiful wife Jackie, is not with me today. But we still want to look and say, you know, what might God have for me today? And we look back at Sunday's message and think, what, what else do we need to say? What else did God lay on our heart? And the, the lesson was about what's impossible. When we have a God who is all-powerful, what could possibly be impossible with God on our side? When we look at that verse that says, with men it's impossible, but with God all things are possible. And for most of us, it's not really that hard for us to believe that there is this uh, superpower, super powerful, super being that is out there, even if you don't have a Bible background, that is essentially unstoppable because of his power. And yet, we often say, I don't have a problem believing that that creature exists, but how could I possibly fit into that plan? I mean, after all, I am so insignificant. When I think of the immense uh, expanse of the universe and how that God not only created it but he is intimately involved in it every single day who am I if we even just look at the world I mean the vastness of the world and the number of people the souls that are involved and we consider that I mean we're just sinners we have failed so many times and God has such beauty in nature such precision in the way the world and the universe and you know even the laws of nature down to the to the very basics of life they're so beautifully wonderfully put together wonderfully made so who am I that an almighty God would even care well if God has such a big plan my role in it must be so minuscule that it wouldn't matter so if I don't do anything, it doesn't matter because God's got way more people than may, maybe even more talented people, more beautiful people, whatever. So why would he care? You know, if God is so engaged in every detail of the universe, he is sustaining it. It's very easy to imagine we're just lost in the numbers that we possibly don't have any role to play. But if we consider for a moment a few things, first of all, God is omnipresent. That means he's everywhere all the time. So he didn't get stuck doing something somewhere else and <clears throat> can't bother himself with my problem today. He's already here. Yes, he's over there, and yes, he's over there, but he's here too. He is also omnipotent. That means he's all-powerful. So he has the power to handle everything. He's never going to run out of power. He's not going to be so overwhelmed with this that there's nothing left for this or for me. That's just not the way it is. He's, he is omnipotent. He has all the power. He's omniscient. That means he knows everything. He knows past. He knows present. He knows future. He knows everything that's going on in our lives. No reason to hide it from him because he already knows. Now, we may need to deal with it, with him, but he already knows. Let's just think for a minute. How about the fact that he is beyond time? God exists beyond time, outside of time. He is an eternal being, infinitely into the past, infinitely into the future. He always has and always will exist, and he is not bound by any particular moment. So he's not so busy that he can't consider our everyday little problems. He tells us to pray without ceasing. He wants to hear from us all the time. Somehow, God being God, he has time for the minutia of our own little lives, even in the expanse of the universe and all that he's doing. Now consider this. He provided for you and I 
salvation. We just sinners, failures. But he cared enough, he loved enough to save us. And at the cost of his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, out of all of the universe, God chose to save you, to offer you salvation if you're not saved, and to save you if you'll but receive it. If he would go that far for you and I, there is nothing insignificant about our existence. That should also roll off into the rest of our lives. When we look at another person, there are no insignificant people to God. And there shouldn't be any insignificant people to us. You are important to God. No matter what anybody says, you are important to God. No matter what anybody says, God forgives you if you accept he forgives you of all your past failure, all your sin, all your weaknesses. He loves us that much. And he is all powerful. And he says, talk to me. When you line your heart up with mine, when you line your, light up, uh, your life up with my plan, there's nothing that's impossible. And so, how is it we get wrapped up and the, the everyday little things that shouldn't bother us. Not everything's going to be a Red Sea experience. Not everything's going to be Jesus calming the storm. But if he can do those things in our life, what are we worried about today's little problems? We just tell him about them and say, God, I trust you. We'll do it your way. My way always seems to blow up in my face anyway. <laughs> Let's do it your way, God. There is no failure, no sin in your past that he hasn't forgiven. Jesus died for all of it. So don't let that hold you back. Confess it, get past it, and say, Here my Lord, send me. What can I do for you today? How can I lift up your name? How can I look at every day, today's problems, even if they seem big, and think about them in a new way that, hey, I'm not alone. God's right here with me, and he can handle it. No problem. If we can begin to do that, and we can get excited about what God's doing, it'll be much harder for the devil or for ourselves or for this world to push us down and to hinder our ability to bring joy to those around us and hope to a world who is lost and dying in sin. We also can't let fear, fear of what somebody else thinks. Who are they? I mean, they're just sinners, just like you and I. Whether they hold a position in society higher or lower than us, whether they have more money or less money than us, it doesn't matter. Whether they seem more talented or whatever. You know, you and I are who God made us. And he's happy. So don't let fear hold you back. Don't let worry ruin your day. Because with God, all things are possible. And all we have to do is just focus on Him. Come to Him. Rejoice in Him. And say, Lord, today it's all about You. Today I'm going to read take this day and say this is the day the Lord has made and I'm going to rejoice in it regardless of what's going on in my life I know I'm loved by God and now I'm going to pass that on to somebody around me I hope you have a great day I hope you can share the love of God with somebody today and Jesus uh, wants to work in your life God bless and have a great day